Peace Frog, the doors here on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Our guests in studio are George McGovern, the former senator, Democratic presidential candidate of 1972. He has endorsed Hillary Clinton for president. Jim Hightower is also with us, the syndicated columnist, rabble rouser, national radio commentator, best selling author. He has just gone on the road with his new book, Swim Against the Current, Even a Dead Fish Can Go with the Flow. Jim, you are you were a superdelegate and you have been stumping for Barack Obama. Why? Well, uh, superdelegate, I'm, I'm going to have to uh, freshen up my resume, I think. I don't have that listed on there, <laughs> but uh, I felt really super about it in 1992. It didn't mean anything uh, back then. Uh, Who but, chose you? Uh, just as uh, Senator McGovern was indicating, uh, you're chosen by the party officials. I had just been agriculture commissioner and so was allowed. I didn't want to take a slot of a, of a real delegate, uh, so uh, so that it was possible to slip me in there into that. And uh, as I say, it didn't mean a damn thing. Uh, you were still the same sort of delegate. You had the same level of vote and everything. But uh, this time, uh, it's different. And yeah, I support uh, Barack Obama. Uh, to me, the significant thing about the uh, Obama phenomena is not him, it's the phenomena. Uh, the fact that we have millions of new voters, excited voters, uh, people who've not been voting in the past, but who feel that this time they matter. Uh, and that they have a potential uh, not just to send Obama to the White House, but for them to go into the White House. Uh, not just uh, the party operatives, and not just the uh, uh, usual special interests, uh, but for the people themselves to be able to go in. I don't think anybody thinks that Obama, and I don't even think he thinks that uh, there's any sainthood here, there's any uh, magic uh, going to come just by him being president. But with him, I think we've got a potential uh, to have a real progressive government because the people themselves would be a force in it. Senator George McGovern, you've made a different decision. You've endorsed Hillary Clinton. Well, I endorsed Hillary last October, and I have to say that friendship had a lot to do with it. She and her then boyfriend, a guy by the name of Bill Clinton, were the uh, coordinators of the McGovern campaign in Texas in 1972. That was a brave undertaking. Uh, as Jim Hightower can testify, trying to sell George McGovern in Texas in 1972 was a daunting task. They worked their fannies off for me in 72 all across that uh, state. And uh, so when she decided to run for uh, president, in a sense, it was kind of a, it's my turn now. I have to tell you this, uh, Jim, that I have 10 grandchildren. All 10 of them are working for Barack Obama. That's an indication of the influence I have uh, in my own family. I've got three daughters and one son. They're all working for uh, Barack. So uh, I'm the old fogey in uh, the McGovern family <laughs> this year, unlike uh, 72 when I was way out in front. But I agree with everything uh, uh, Jim Hightower has said here, that uh, Barack Obama has touched on a theme and a style and a content to his uh, program that has brought millions of new people into the fold. That's precisely what I did in 1972. We ran into all kinds of trouble once I was nominated, but we stirred many of the same currents that are uh, moving uh, now. So I'll be happy to support either Hillary or Barack, depending on which one wins the nomination. And whichever one wins, we'll have a candidate that's a country mile ahead of the opposition. Senator McGovern, if you were endorsing today, who would you endorse? I would stay with uh, Hillary. I don't change my mind on things like this in the middle of the battle. I made the decision to back her, and I'll stay with her. I don't want to be jumping around from one candidate to another. <laughs> and as I said, uh, we've got two excellent candidates here, both well uh, qualified, and I'll be out campaigning for whichever one wins. Am I ducking your question? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because I want to stay with the person I chose six months ago. Um, 
There was an interesting piece in the New York Times about how your whole group in 1972, they're coming together um, around Hillary Clinton's 72 McGovern team rallies for one of its own. It says Frank Herrera, a prominent lawyer in Texas, was sitting at home two Saturdays ago when he received a phone call. The voice at the end of the line was that of an old friend from Senator George McGovern's 72 presidential campaign, who'd since become the godfather, at least, to some of the Democratic Party. We've been with you all these years, former Bill Clinton, former President Bill Clinton said, according to to Herrera, now the time has come for you to be with us. Uh, talking about um, Herrera, going back to your 1972 campaign, Gary Morrow, veteran Texas Democrat who ran the Youth for McGovern operation, now Ms. Clinton's state director, Roy Spence, Austin advertising executive who created advertisements for the McGovern campaign, deeply involved in Clinton's media strategy in Texas. Even a receptionist from the McGovern campaign, Nancy Williams, has been called back to lend a hand to the Clinton operation conducting delegate training sessions from the campaign's headquarters in Austin. Well, that makes me feel good because uh, I've noticed over the years that while we took a terrific beating at the hands of Richard Nixon in the fall, those so-called McGovern people are still in there battling for better government, uh, for stronger candidates. I think they'll be there the rest of their lives. And uh, it's one of the reasons, frankly, that I stand with Hillary in this uh, effort, because I've got a long memory, and I know who stood for me 35 years ago. Do you think Barack Obama would have? Uh, I think he's a marvelous uh, figure on the political scene. I had never met him at the time I endorsed uh, Hillary. I hadn't even shaken hands with him at that time, but I've been very impressed with him. I see some of the same things in him that Jim Hightower uh, does, and uh, I'm glad he's a candidate this year. I think he has shaken things up, and whether we win or lose uh, uh, with that particular candidacy, he's already contributed a lot to the enrichment of American politics. Um. I wanted to get your quick comment, Senator McGovern, on something that's playing out right now in the state you're visiting in New York. And of course, it's about the governor, um, Governor Elliot Spitzer. Um, I actually was in Albany yesterday uh, as news of this, um, uh, the allegations that he was caught in a federal sting calling an a, a escort service. Um, I was in Albany, interestingly enough, to give a keynote along with. Governor Spitzer on the issue of reproductive rights and politics. Um, a thousand people were there, and he canceled. It was yesterday morning. Um, David Patterson, who could become the next governor of New York, was also there speaking, the lieutenant governor. Um, but do you see a danger of a kind of explosion within the Democratic Party? I don't think it's going to explode the uh, Democratic Party. What we're talking about here is a sin that's as old as human beings. Um, the two people I feel the sorriest for are the governor and his wife. This is going to be a tough thing for them. I hope they can uh, survive it. But uh, Governor Spitzer has had an almost flawless uh, public record uh, over the years. I don't know of any scandal that has touched this man. It seems like that in politics, when the uh, Republicans get into trouble with uh, sin, it's over money. Somebody misplaced a billion dollars or 300 million or whatever it is. When the Democrats get in trouble, it's sex. And uh, well, you have I've, Senator Vetter from Louisiana uh, got in trouble with an escort. He's still senator from Louisiana. Just uh, introduced legislation that Native American women can't have uh, abortions on with federal funding. And then, you, of course, you have the scandal around Larry Craig, which was very different. But look, he remains one, senator. One, one he, of the most honored uh, figures in the Bible was King David, the man that wrote those wonderful psalms and who you go to Israel today and you stay in the King David Hotel in uh, Israel. He had, uh, he fell and uh, had a, got a crush on the wife of one of his uh, lieutenants. And he sent the poor guy up to the battlefront and got him killed so he could have his wife. Elliot Spitzer hasn't done anything like that. I'm not trying to minimize this uh, Are you mistake. comparing Elliot Spitzer to King David? <laughs> yeah, in a way. <laughs> Uh, King David asked God to forgive him, 
And I believe he did. He asked the people to forgive him, and I believe they did. And he went on to become a great uh, religious and political leader of the Israelis. So um, we have to take these things in some kind of uh, perspective. Should the governor have thought more carefully about what he was doing before he got mixed up with this a woman? Of course he should. Uh, so should King David have thought more carefully about his actions. But um, this is a sin, not a crime, as I understand it. I don't think he's accused of any crimes. I think it's obviously a, a sin and something that's very embarrassing and uh, horrendous for his wife and his uh, family. But I'm, um, I'm going to leave it in their judgment. I'm not going to try to pass judgment on somebody else's sin. Jim Hightower. Maybe, it, uh, maybe the greatest sin here was that it was uh, not just a street prostitute, but a $5,000 an hour prostitute. 